Burt Lancaster, more than just a handsome face, was a resilient and determined multi-award winning American actor and producer. His unexpected journey into acting began after an injury led him to audition for a Broadway play. Before acting, he was an acrobatic athlete for a circus company. Initially known for tough guy roles and athletic abilities, Lancaster later showcased his versatility with complex character roles. He also found success as a producer, with his production company becoming innovative in Hollywood. Join us today as we look at one of the greatest male stars of classic Hollywood cinema, Burt Lancaster. And please let us know which other legends you would like us to cover. Lancaster was born on November 2, 1913, in his parents' residence at 209 East 106th Street in New York City. His parents, Elizabeth and James Lancaster, were both working-class Protestants. All four of his grandparents had immigrated from Ireland to the United States, specifically from the province of Ulster. His maternal grandparents hailed from Belfast and were descendants of English dissenters who had settled in Ireland during the plantation of Ulster. Growing up in East Harlem, New York City, Lancaster developed a strong passion and talent for gymnastics while attending DeWitt Clinton High School, where he excelled as a basketball player. Unfortunately, before his graduation from DeWitt Clinton, his mother passed away due to a cerebral hemorrhage. Although Lancaster received an athletic scholarship to New York University, he ultimately decided to drop out. During his time in the Army, Lancaster traveled throughout Italy, performing in various USO shows for the troops. He entertained soldiers with his singing, dancing, and comedic talents, bringing a sense of joy and camaraderie to those serving overseas. Lancaster's performances were well received by the troops, who appreciated the opportunity to relax and enjoy some entertainment amidst the hardships of war. In addition to his work with the USO, Lancaster also participated in various military operations and engagements during his time in Italy. He served alongside his fellow soldiers, facing the challenges and dangers of war with courage and determination. Lancaster's experiences in the army had a profound impact on him, shaping his outlook on life and instilling in him a deep sense of patriotism and duty. After being discharged from the army in 1945, Lancaster returned to civilian life, but his time in the military left a lasting impression on him. He continued to support veterans and military causes throughout his life, recognizing the sacrifices and contributions of those who serve their country. Lancaster's service in the army during World War II was a formative experience that influenced his career and personal values for years to come. After completing his army service, Lancaster made his way back to New York. Despite his initial lack of interest in acting, he was persuaded to try out for a Broadway production by a producer who spotted him in an elevator while he was visiting his then-girlfriend at her workplace. The audition went well, leading to Lancaster landing a role in Harry Brown's A Sound of Hunting. Although the show only lasted three weeks, his performance caught the eye of Hollywood agent Harold Hecht. While Lancaster had other offers on the table, Hecht offered him the chance to produce his own films within five years of arriving in Hollywood. Thanks to Hecht's introduction, Lancaster came to the attention of producer Hal B. Wallace. This led to Lancaster leaving New York and relocating to Los Angeles, where Wallace signed him to an eight-movie contract that was not exclusive. Lancaster was a master at keeping his personal life under wraps, despite his fame. He had a total of three marriages and five children, but he made sure to guard his privacy fiercely. Not only did he have multiple affairs, both with men and women, but his family confirmed this as well. His first marriage was to June Ernst, a talented trapeze acrobat. June came from a family of renowned aerialists, and she herself was an accomplished acrobat. Lancaster joined her family's performances after they tied the knot, but their relationship eventually came to an end in the late 1930s. The exact date of their divorce remains unclear, with some reports suggesting 1940 while others proposed dates as late as 1946. This delay in finalizing their divorce played a role in Lancaster's second marriage. It was during a USO production in Italy that Lancaster crossed paths with his second wife, Norma Anderson, 1917 to 1988. 
Norma, who worked as a stenographer, stepped in for an ailing actress and caught Lancaster's eye as he spotted her in the crowd on his way to town from the airport. Intrigued by his charm, she turned to an officer and inquired about the handsome man's marital status. The officer, sensing a potential connection, arranged a blind date for them that very evening. Their chemistry was undeniable and they tied the knot in 1946. Norma was not just a supportive wife but also an active participant in political causes. She had a deep passion for the League of Women Voters, and their Bel Air home had an entire room dedicated to her interests. This room was filled with printing presses and all the necessary supplies for mass mailings, showcasing her commitment to her major interest. Throughout her entire life, she remained a dedicated member of the NAACP, actively fighting for civil rights and equality. Her unwavering support for Martin Luther King Jr. and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference led her and her husband to organize a highly successful fundraising event prior to the historic 1963 March on Washington. The event brought together influential figures and raised significant funds to support the movement. During this time, all five of her children, Bill, James, Susan, Joanna, and Sheila, stood by her side, sharing her passion for social justice. Bill later pursued a career in acting and screenwriting, following in his mother's footsteps of using art as a means of advocating for change. Joanna found success as a film producer, using her platform to shed light on important social issues. However, despite her dedication to the cause, her personal life was filled with difficulties. Her marriage faced numerous challenges, leading to a separation in 1966 and ultimately ending in divorce in 1969. The strain of her activism and the constant pressure of fighting for justice took a toll on her relationship. During the tumultuous period of her separation, she entered into a passionate but volatile relationship with Jackie Bone, a hairdresser who worked on the film The Professionals. Their love affair was marked by intense emotions, with moments of both deep connection and explosive arguments. One incident, during a dinner with renowned filmmaker Sidney Pollack and actor Peter Falk, saw Bone smashing a wine bottle over her head in a fit of rage. It wasn't until his third marriage, to Susan Martin in September 1990, that Lancaster found stability and happiness. This marriage lasted until Lancaster's passing in 1994. An American life, loyalty was a defining trait for Lancaster. He remained steadfastly devoted to his friends and family, maintaining lifelong connections with childhood companions. His commitment to his loved ones mirrored her dedication to the fight for equality, showcasing his unwavering loyalty in all aspects of his life. In addition to these rumored romantic involvements, Lancaster was also linked to several other actresses throughout his career. It was speculated that he had a brief fling with Ava Gardner during the filming of The Killers in 1946, although neither party ever confirmed the relationship. Lancaster was also rumored to have had a passionate affair with Rita Hayworth during the production of Separate Tables in 1958, but again, this was never confirmed. Another actress who was romantically linked to Lancaster was Shirley Jones. They starred together in the film Elmer Gantry in 1960, and their on-screen chemistry led to rumors of a real-life romance. However, both Jones and Lancaster denied any romantic involvement, stating that they were simply good friends. Lancaster's personal life was often the subject of speculation and gossip, but he remained tight-lipped about his relationships. He was known for being a private individual and preferred to keep his personal affairs out of the public eye. Despite the rumors and speculation, Lancaster maintained a professional and respectful demeanor towards his co-stars, and his focus was always on his work. Ultimately, while there were many rumors and speculations about Lancaster's romantic relationships, the truth remains unknown. He was a talented actor who captivated audiences with his performances, and his personal life remained a mystery to the public. Despite his Protestant background and upbringing, Lancaster identified as an atheist later in life. He started to doubt the existence of a higher being and the teachings of organized religion, eventually rejecting the beliefs he was brought up with. Lancaster immersed himself in philosophical and scientific writings, searching for explanations to the enigmas of the universe without relying on a god. 
His newly found atheism molded his perspective on life and impacted how he engaged with others, resulting in intense debates and conversations about faith and logic. Despite facing disapproval and negative reactions from his community, Lancaster remained unwavering in his lack of belief, finding comfort in the notion that he alone was accountable for his choices and behaviors. Going back to his career, Lancaster's journey took an unexpected turn when he made the decision to drop out of college. Alongside his friend Nick Cravat, he dedicated himself to mastering the art of acrobatics. Not stopping there, the dynamic duo also sought to learn the craft of acting by immersing themselves in the local theater scene. It wasn't long before their talents caught the attention of the K Brothers Circus and they eagerly joined the troupe. However, fate had other plans for Lancaster. A devastating injury forced him to bid farewell to his circus career in 1939. Determined to make ends meet, he took on various jobs, starting as a salesman and later becoming a singing waiter in different restaurants. Life seemed to be taking him on a different path, but destiny had something extraordinary in store. In 1942, with the United States entering World War II, Lancaster felt a calling to serve his country. He enlisted in the Army and became a part of the 21st Special Services Division, a unit dedicated to boosting morale through USO entertainment. From 1943 to 1945, he proudly served alongside General Mark Clark's 5th Army. After his honorable service in the war, Lancaster found himself reluctantly auditioning for a Broadway play. To his surprise, he landed a role in Harry Brown's A Sound of Hunting, marking his debut in the theater world. Although the play had a short run of only three weeks, it laid the foundation for Lancaster's future acting career. His exceptional talent on stage caught the attention of Harold Hetcher, who introduced him to producer Mark Hellinger. This connection led to Lancaster's starring role in Hellinger's The Killers, where he showcased his brilliance as an actor and received widespread acclaim for his film debut. From that point on, Lancaster's career soared as he appeared in a diverse range of films spanning various genres, including drama, thrillers, military stories, and adventures. His versatility and captivating performances captivated audiences worldwide. In 1948, Lancaster joined forces with Harold Hetch to establish their own production company, Norma Productions. The following year, their debut film, Kiss the Blood Off My Hands, hit the screens, marking the beginning of their successful venture. In 1950, Lancaster released The Flame and the Arrow, a film that not only showcased his acting prowess but also reunited him with his old friend Nick Cravat from their circus days. Together, they mesmerized audiences with their acrobatic skills, leaving a lasting. In 1953, Lancaster had a remarkable year in terms of career success. He portrayed First Sergeant Milton Warden in From Here to Eternity, a role that is still remembered fondly. The movie, which starred Deborah Kerr as his love interest, was even listed among the AFI's top 100 romantic films of all time. Lancaster's career continued to soar in 1954 when he starred in Warner Brothers' His Majesty O'Keefe. This film was particularly special as it marked his first venture into directing as he co-directed the movie. The following year, he made his directorial debut with The Kentuckian. From 1955 to 1960, Lancaster's production company made headlines multiple times. Their film Marty not only won the Academy Award for Best Picture but also received the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival. James Hill later joined the company, transforming it into Hill Hetch Lancaster Productions. The release of Trapeze in 1956 was a huge box office success. The year 1960 was a turning point in Lancaster's career. His role in Elmer Gantry earned him global recognition, along with prestigious awards like the Academy Award, Golden Globe Award, and New York's Film Critics Award. After Elmer Gantry, Lancaster took on a variety of roles in different movies. He portrayed a Nazi war criminal in Judgment at Nuremberg, a convict serving a life sentence in Birdman of Alcatraz, an Italian nobleman in The Leopold, and a U.S. Air Force general in Seven Days in May. Towards the end of the 1960s, Lancaster teamed up with Roland Kibbe to create three films, 
The Scalf Hunters in 1968, Valdez is Coming in 1971, and The Midnight Man in 1974. In 1970, Lancaster starred in the inaugural disaster film, Airport, which boasted a unique plot and storyline, making it a truly distinctive piece of cinema. The movie went on to become one of the highest-grossing films of 1970. As his career progressed, Lancaster evolved as an actor, embracing character roles that required depth and skill. He transitioned from action-packed adventures to portraying distinguished characters, collaborating with various European production companies. His final big-screen appearance was in the 1989 film, Field of Dreams. In addition to his film work, Lancaster made a mark on television, starting with appearances in television miniseries from 1974 onwards. His portrayal of Gerard Carrier in the 1990 television series, The Phantom of the Opera, earned him a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actor in a Television Film or Miniseries. His last television role was as John W. Davis in Separate But Equal. The year 1960 was a significant one for Lancaster in terms of recognition. Despite establishing himself as a talented actor, it was not until Elmer Gantry that he received major awards. His portrayal of a charming yet deceitful salesman in the film earned him an Academy Award, a Golden Globe Award, and a New York Film Critics Award. Awards and Achievements Throughout his career, Burt Lancaster received four Academy Award nominations, winning once for his role in Elmer Gantry, which also earned him a Golden Globe Award. He won the BAFTA Award for Best Actor twice, for The Birdman of Alcatraz in 1962 and Atlantic City in 1980. The latter also garnered him nominations for the Academy Awards, Golden Globe, and Genie Award for Best Actor. Lancaster has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame located at 6801 Hollywood Boulevard. In 1999, he ranked 19th amongst the greatest male star of classic Hollywood cinema by American Film Institute. Despite his advancing age and the onset of cardiovascular disease, Lancaster remained determined to continue his acting career and public activism. In the early 1980s, he faced a major health scare when complications arose from a routine gallbladder surgery in January 1980. Although he narrowly survived this ordeal, it served as a wake-up call for Lancaster to take his health more seriously. In the following years, Lancaster endured two minor heart attacks, further highlighting the severity of his cardiovascular condition. Recognizing the urgency of his situation, he made the difficult decision to undergo an emergency quadruple coronary bypass in 1983. This procedure was a significant undertaking, but Lancaster's determination to overcome his health challenges allowed him to recover and continue pursuing his passions. Despite his ongoing health battles, Lancaster remained committed to his acting career and public activism. In 1988, he took a stand against media mogul Ted Turner's proposal to colorize classic black and white films from the 1930s and 1940s. Alongside former colleagues such as James Stewart and Ginger Rogers, Lancaster participated in a congressional hearing in Washington, D.C., to voice his opposition. This demonstration of his unwavering dedication to preserving the integrity of cinema showcased his enduring passion for the arts. Unfortunately, Lancaster's health took a devastating turn in November 1990. At the age of 77, he suffered a stroke that left him partially paralyzed and mostly unable to communicate. This tragic event marked the end of his acting days, as the physical limitations imposed by the stroke made it impossible for him to continue performing. Despite the challenges he faced in his later years, Lancaster's legacy as a talented actor and passionate activist remains intact. His determination to overcome health obstacles and his unwavering commitment to his craft and causes serve as a testament to his indomitable spirit. Burt Lancaster passed away in his Century City apartment in Los Angeles, following his third heart attack at 4.50 a.m. on October 20, 1994. Following his cremation, his ashes were respectfully scattered beneath a majestic oak tree in Westwood Memorial Park, situated in Westwood Village, California. 
A modest square ground plaque bearing the inscription Burt Lancaster 1913-1994 serves as a poignant marker at the site. In accordance with his wishes, no formal memorial or funeral service was conducted to honor his memory.